Welcome back to all of his greenhouse. Now I'm away this weekend, I'm off to Paris, which is going to be very exciting. It's also the first weekend away uh, that me and the wife have had in about six years without the children. So we're very excited and really looking forward to it. So I thought I'd use the opportunity I've got tonight to do a, a multiple update on a few things that I've done in the past. I've been a bit lax on video uploads recently. So I thought I'd grab you guys, we're going to go inside and we're going to have a look at the DIY terracotta pots. We're going to have a look at the orchid I mounted on a rock. Uh, we're going to have a look at how the um, orchid source amounts have turned out as well, uh, how well the plants have grown on them, and anything else I can think of whilst we're inside. So I'll pick you guys up. We've still got a bit of light. We'll head in the greenhouse and uh, I'll show you a few things. Okay, so here we are in the greenhouse. There's just enough light, I think. It's going to be okay. We're going to be able to see some stuff and it's going to give us a chance to have a look at those things I was mentioning before. So we've got the orchid on a rock over here. We're going to have a look at that. So I'll leave that by the fan over here. We've got the DIY terracotta pots. We've got those. We've got the Arides hallucinana, which is doing, I think we're gonna have to change uh, how we approach the growth, growing this thing. I don't think I've got it quite right, but it's a bit of a learning curve. So, and also we've got the uh, orchids, um, whatever they are, source amounts as well, because I've got a few of those going on. Let's try and pick one of the ones that's really looking pretty dang good. This guy here looks pretty good at the moment. So we'll have a look at that. What I'll do is I'll pick you guys up over there. Bring you over this way. Turn this noisy fan off because it's going to make an irritating noise the whole time we're doing this video. And we'll have a look at that. One thing that's next to you, which I'm very excited about. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, the leg of the um, camera is on my most wobbly of um, paving slabs in the greenhouse. So every time I move... Unfortunately, it makes you guys move a little bit, so I'll try and stay off that. And uh, I'll move you down here. In fact, I might be able to pick it up. It's gonna make, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wind you guys down a little bit, going down. There we go, because I need to be able to see on the screen at the back of the, the camera what's actually, what you guys are actually looking at. So here in front of us, this is, and hopefully that's going to be in shot, this is Gongora galliata or galita. And it's got quite a few new flower spikes coming on it. Now I was giving, I was kindly gifted this. Um, you know who you are. Thank you very much. It's going to flower for me as well now. And what I'll do is I'll try and zoom in, and we'll have a look at some of the new flower spikes. I'm going to zoom you right in, maximum zoom, like that. Okay, and I'm going to hold you guys up, and hopefully, centre of shot, you can see there's one flower spike. That's, if I point to it, it might be more obvious. There's one flower spike just here by my finger. And also, if I turn it around, side view, there's also another flower spike just there. And there's another flower spike just here by my finger as well. So this guy is going to put out multiple flower spikes for me. Now, I've not done very well with Gongora in the past. I've certainly, I had one and I definitely killed it. So I'm quite excited about uh, that one being a bit more of a success. So that's fantastic. I'll pick you guys up and we'll head over there and have a look at some of the updates. Right, whilst we've got some light left in the greenhouse, this is my Arides Halutiana. This thing is a long suffering orchid of mine. And uh, someone piped up in the comments section a couple of days ago and was like, with this is beautifully blunt sentence, which simply read, and how's it doing then? exclamation mark and I thought to myself how how very forward of that person and then I also thought to myself actually I haven't done an update on this and that's very lazy of me so here is the plant in question and it's producing a new leaf up here and it was hanging up which is why there's bits of fishing line uh, attached to this net pot here and there's a root that sort of comes down here and I was keeping it too wet so this root well basically died off so I don't actually know what's going on in the pot here so what I thought we could do is we could unpot it right now in front of the camera and we'll find out exactly how it is actually doing um, and I, I just don't seem to be able to grow this species uh, certainly not well because I'm too lazy so what I'm going to do is whilst you guys are there I'm going to get one of my handy trays without breaking loads of other orchids ah there we go, these trays I've got here are absolutely fantastic for this. So I thought right in front of you, trying to destroy my greenhouse too much in the process, we just get it out and we just have a look. So make sure these strings are out of the way. So let's find out. So this is in a tiny bit of sphagnum moss and mainly just uh, medium grade perlite. I'm gonna have to cut that. Notice one of, the wire, one of the pieces of fishing line, the roots sort of gone out of it and then 
growing around it. So I'm going to bite that off like that. There we go. So I've severed that. So we should be able to, in theory, just unpop this little fella. And we'll see if it's got any roots on it. Like I said, lots of perlite in here and some medium grade orchid bark. Now let's see how well it's doing or how badly it's doing. I'm expecting it to be doing badly as I seem to not be able to grow this species uh, at all anyway. I've had it for years and it's never done very well for me. So please, suggestions down below on how I can change the, uh, my culture of this plant and I shall do so accordingly uh, depending on which um, suggestion seems the most informed or the most realistic. So I'm going to try very carefully not to snap any of these roots off here. Let's get it out completely, get rid of that old pot and have a look at what we've actually got here. So here we go. We have got some quite healthy roots, some roots which have grown and then just completely died and become nothing. So that is how it was doing in a net pot with medium grade or small um, orchid bark and a tiny bit of sphagnum moss. And as you can see, it's not really doing too well. We've got, I'm gonna bring it in a little closer or I'm gonna zoom in and then bring it in a little closer so you can see. So these are the roots as they stand. We've got one good root here, lush green. This is another good root here. This is another good root. It's perfectly healthy. The tip has died off at this branch just here. Uh, that's also another healthy root underneath, or well, the end of it is not. So I would say that growing this plant uh, in any form of media is probably a bad idea. I think in future what I would probably do is put this back into the net pot. So put it back into a pot, maybe a little bit bigger than this. And I might just fill it with charcoal, um, maybe a few pieces of rock wall, uh, just to retain a little bit of moisture, or maybe some large diameter grow stone. And I think it would do much better, because like I say, it is producing a new leaf. If, some, if you look back at some of my other videos on this fella, it was looking super rough. So it's doing better, um, but still obviously the proof's in the pudding and we're not quite there yet. So the, the saga continues with that one. What's next? Right, the next update, we're gonna be having a look at some of the terracotta, DIY terracotta orchid pots. Now these are the ones I drilled previously. I'll put a link um, into that video uh, in the description. So here we go. This is. Dendrobium kingianum. It was just a tiny, tiny little sprout. I'll see if I can find an image of it when it was smaller. I just popped it in this pot with a little bit of sphagnum moss and some small grade orchid bark. And since then it has gone great guns. If we look closer, you can see we've even got moss growing out of some of the pot holes in here. And the orchid itself has put on lots of new growth. A few kikis up here. There's a nice new growth that's coming this year. There's another new growth down here as well. Uh, and another new growth just over here. So that's been a bit of a roaring success, really. It seems to grow very well and very happily uh, in that DIY terracotta pot. And what I do is I just let it dry out. As soon as this changes color to a much lighter color, I know it's time to give it another, uh, another dose of, um, uh, of, of water and a feed. And it seems to do very well. I've got one more plant which is growing in uh, one of these orchid pots that I drilled, and it's over the back here. Hang on. Bear with me. And it is, I can't remember, I think, what is it? I can't even remember what it is. It's completely skipped my mind. Uh, I, I think it's Ornithophora. No, it's not. It's a Gomeza. Gomeza radicans, I think it is. Um, although it's got another name as well. Um, I'll no doubt put that at the bottom of this video. And it's been growing in one of these holy orchid pots that I drilled myself for quite a while now. And um, it seems to be doing very well. Lots of new growth, um, lots of new leaves. It's certainly, well, doubled in size since I had it. Let's zoom in and have a little look. There we go. So there's the pot. Those are the holes I made in it. It's nice and damp. There's some nice fresh root tips there as well. And there's the plant itself. So those are growing well. Directly in front of us, we've got two of my DIY orchid saucer mounts. Uh, this is Bulbophyllum, I think this is Lassiochylum. Uh, yeah, this is Bulbophyllum Lassiochylum. And the other one over here is, it's probably fallen off. No, it's not. This is Bulbophyllum flabellum veneris over here. 
Um, although I think, if I remember rightly, it's actually incorrectly labelled. It was sold to me as that, but it's actually a big Rothschildianum. And as you can see, they are thriving on these orchid sauce. This is slug damage over here. That's why someone's bitten it. And that was from a while ago before I was really controlling the slugs in here uh, a little bit better. So they're growing really well on these orchid sauce amounts. What I would say is they sort of become like a, becomes like its own little ecosystem. If I zoom in, you can see the amount of mosses and stuff which end up growing uh, on the media and the substrate is just unbelievable. Move this out of the way here. Everywhere you look, there's just moss growing all over the place. Um, and the media inside, if we look deep down inside, I hope it's going to focus here. This is actually in pretty good nick, but it's coming close to that point where I'm going to have to repot one of these. Obviously, I'm going to do a video on that at the same time. Uh, and I'm also going to change the design of this as well. We're going to take this right off of some of these sources and we're going to stitch it on instead because I think that's going to be easier for when it comes to repotting time because you'll be able to just cut, zip, zip, zip around here, take the whole thing off, take everything out, and then afterwards just stitch it back up again. So as you can see, they are growing very well on that. We'll pop him down over here. Same for Lassio Kylum. Lots of new growth. The, 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 the moss kind of went a funny brown colour. It got really warm and it went a bit manky. So you can see that's gone brown there and not very attractive. Lots of new growth. There's some new growth down here. New growth, that's all this year. Another new growth there as well. And it's growing very well, but when I see the moss going this funny colour, I use that as a real indicator that it's time to repot. So there's, there's still some live moss up top here. But this moss here, this big pad that grew, that it grew like a sheep moss all over the surface of the mount, has gone brown now, which is my indicator that it's time to repot this guy. So this will definitely be up for repot soon. Right, I'm sure some of you would have been keen to see how this guy was getting on. This is the latest experiment. This is growing orchids on a rock. So this is on a big lump of lava rock, and this is a Dendrobium speciosum compactum which is the smaller growing variety, and it was just a little kiki. It came off from work. It was literally falling off the mother plant, and it was lying there desiccating. That's why these leaves haven't really sort of opened properly. Uh, it's very stiff, actually, very almost leathery. Uh, and we mounted it on this piece of lava rock here, and I tied it on with some string with just a tiny little bit of sphagnum moss, and I've just been watering the rock, and it soaks in really well and retains moisture. And since, it's, since well, I don't know how long it's been, maybe a month, maybe as much it's producing, nice new fleshy green root tips it's looking really really good the rocks holding out well as you'd imagine it's come from the center of the earth so it's in pretty good nick nothing's changed there let's zoom in and we'll be able to have a little bit of a closer look at some of those root tips there there you go you can certainly see them a little bit better a little bit clearer there and then today i noticed if we pan up that thing looks like a wood louse it's actually a new growth, so it's, gonna, it's actually survived, it's thriving, and we're going to get a new growth out of it. So it seems to quite like growing on a rock. I haven't noticed any other growths on it, but that guy there is, def that is definitely what that is, just there. So that's another roaring success. I'm interested to see how this guy pans out over the ensuing months, especially as it's pretty warm here at the moment. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it's come across as a bit dark, but I've got to like, sort of like squeeze these videos in, mainly at the end of the day, because there's just, once the time I put the kids to bed, there's not really a lot of time left, and it's really just taking advantage of the fact there is some light here to enable me to bring you in here and actually have a look at some of this stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed this update, or this multiple update. We've looked at lots of things. We've got some good stuff coming out. Like I said, we're going to be repotting, unmounting and repotting kind of one of those orchid source amounts. I need to make some divisions because they're all sort of sprawling all over the place anyway. So we're definitely going to be having a look at that. We're going to be keeping updates on the uh, orchid on a rock because it seems to be working really, really well. In fact, I should put it down before I ruin it all by dropping it and something like that. So we pop him over there. Uh, the Arides, I should pick it up. It's down here. Whee! There we go. So funny, these things, without, any, without hardly any roots on them. It's just like a stem, really. There are, I've actually noticed there's another root emerging, a fresh root uh, emerging further up the stem on the back here. So suggestions uh, down below. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a vote on this video. Okay, I haven't done one of those in ages. I'm going to do a poll. That will appear um, as a card sort of about now or at the end of the video. And we're going to look at a few, a few different ways of, or a few thoughts that I have of how I should mount this. Because we could mount it. We could put it in a basket, um, we could hang it upside down, we could throw it away. I don't know, so I'll come up with a few plans uh, and you can vote for them in the video and whichever is the winning one 
I will then do, we could put it on a stick or a branch, I suppose, as well, or I could, I don't know, hot glue it to the inside of the greenhouse. I don't really know. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck with this, so I'm not super precious about it. So um, I'll put some suggestions in. If you don't like any of those, please comment down below, because some of you are probably growing this with a lot more success than I am, and we'll do, some, we'll do a particular video on the next phase of trying to grow this successfully. So thanks for tuning into Oliver's Greenhouse. I hope you've liked this short update, and uh, like I said, suggestions on this down below. Stay tuned. If you enjoy my content, you want to support this uh, project, head over to Patreon. If not, subscribe if you feel like it and hit the little bell button so you get notified when I do upload another video. And I will be, promise you, I'll be trying to make more of an effort to get some more regular uploads soon. The trouble is I'm trying to like, landscape the garden and the green, doing the greenhouse and everything else. It's just all a bit much at the moment. So uh, keep the faith, hang in there, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Oliver's Greenhouse.